In this video, we're going to talk about Gondwana. And rather than the Chilean reggae band, we're going to talk about the supercontinent Gondwana, and which Australia used to be a part of. We're also going to talk about the two theories that brought us to the conclusion that Gondwana is actually a thing, uh, continental drift and plate tectonics. So firstly, a little bit of history. We'll start 300 million years ago when all the continents on Earth are joined together in one supercontinent known as Pangaea. 200 million years ago, Pangaea split into two supercontinents. The northern supercontinent, Laurasia, consisted of Eurasia and North America, while the southern supercontinent, Gondwana, consisted of all the southern continents, South America, Africa, Australia, Antarctica and India. 145 million years ago, Pangaea starts to separate. At first, Africa, South America and India break off the main body. Then New Zealand and Madagascar break off Australia and Africa. Then 65 million years ago, Australia starts to separate from Antarctica, the final breakup of Gondwana. And this goes on and for about 20 million years and about 45 million years ago, Australia is separate from Antarctica. So we've been a separate continent for 45 million years. Now today, Australia is still drifting to the north, away from Antarctica, and the continent is moving at about 6 centimetres per year. What we're going to do now is look at some of the theories, or the two theories, that went to our understanding of the history that I just told you about. So firstly, was in 1912 when Alfred Wegener uh, suggested the theory of continental drift. So he was a uh, meteorologist and did a lot of expeditions in balloons. Uh, and he was the, well, one of the first ones to propose that the continents weren't stationary, but were actually drifting around and named their supercontinent that they once uh, joined together, uh, Pangaea. So some of the evidence that he had included the close geographical fit, uh, and in particular he looked at South America and Africa, and he looked at the continental boundaries or the coastlines uh, and saw that they actually fit into each other quite well. And he referred to this close fit as like torn newspaper. And so as if they were one piece in the past and had been torn apart like newspaper. Another piece of evidence he had were the narrow mountain belts that were restricted to the continental margins. So we have uh, these very narrow mountain belts that are right on the edge of the continent. So for example, in South America, we have the Andes, uh, between India and Eurasia, we have the Himalayas, and these are quite narrow strings of mountains, and he thought that this might show uh, the movement of the continents. And finally, he had another piece of evidence, which was the distribution of fossils, such as Mesosaurus, which was an early aquatic animal, and Glossopterus, a type of plant, and he actually found that in his recreation of Gondwana, those fossils were found in similar areas once you put the two continents together. We're now going to look at plate tectonics. So Harry Hess was the one that came up with plate tectonics, and it took him a while to get there. Uh, but he first brought his interest when he was in command of the USS Cape Johnson during World War II. Now, the ship had sonar, which was a new thing at the time, and what it was used for was to look at how deep the water was, in particular when coming into harbour. But because he was a geologist, uh, he thought that the things like this were pretty interesting, so rather than just having it on when he was coming into harbour, he just left it on the whole time while he was cruising around in the Atlantic. And what he noticed was that the sea floor had all these mountains and valleys in it, rather than being flat, which is what they originally thought. And in particular, he mapped the Atlantic Mid-Ocean Ridge, so the mountain range that runs through the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. After the war, they went and got uh, samples from the ocean floor, so they drilled into the rock to see how old the rock was. And they found that the ocean floor closest to the Mid-Atlantic Ridge was very young, while the ocean floor furthest away from the ridge was much older. Uh, so this shows that the 
floor was firstly not stationary and being made at different times, and secondly, could be moving away from that mid-ocean ridge. Another thing they found was that those, uh, the age of the ocean floor could be shown like a butterfly from that. So it would uh, suggested ocean floor spreading. So in 1962, he proposed, proposed the idea of sea floor spreading, uh, which led to our current understanding of plate tectonics. And what he proposed was that there was a hot spot where magma was rising in the mid-ocean ridge, uh, and that the uh, sea floor was being made at that point, uh, moved out away from the ridge, and then was being destroyed and got, once it got to the continent. Now, the big difference between plate tectonic and continental drift is that in continental drift the idea is that the continents are moving so they're basically floating by themselves and moving around the world. Plate tectonics is a more all-encompassing theory and what it says is that those continents which are moving are actually sitting on top of plates of which also includes the plate underneath the sea floor etc and they are moving uh, they're the thing that's actually moving around. Uh, and today, we've got a much better idea of plate tectonics, and we've been able to map it with uh, things like GPS and whatnot. Uh, and we've found that there are about 10 large plates, or the 10 major plates, plus a whole heap of smaller plates that are moving underneath our feet. Uh, and depending on how you count those plates will depend on how many uh, particular with the smaller plates. In this video, we've talked about the ancient supercontinent of Gondwana, which was around, around 100 million years ago, 150 million years ago. We've talked about Alfred Wegener and his suggestion of continental drift uh, and the evidence to support that, including the close-fitting continental margins, the distribution of fossils, and the mountain ranges, which were on the continental boundaries. And we've talked about plate tectonics, first put forward by Harry Hess after his work with sonar and his discovery of the Mid-Atlantic Ocean Ridge uh, and his proposal of the sea floor spreading uh, where the young rock is found close to the Mid-Ocean Ridge and the old rock is found closer to the continents.